Hello friends and welcome to another Christian Connection edition here exclusively from Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. I'm Ganem and I'm so glad you're able to join us today live. You know, here in Southern California, we tend to deal with uh, uh, unexpected winds from time to time. We call them the Santa Ana winds. And when they blow, <laughs> they do blow. Sometimes just 30 miles an hour, but I've seen them go as high as 60 miles an hour sometimes or even more. The point is, when those winds comes along, you can't predict them. I mean, the weather forecast can, but we don't know when it's coming unless we check the weather forecast. They do come and there's nothing we can do about them at all. We just go with the flow, feel the resistance of wind. Sometimes it's very annoying, but that's just life. Like so, storms of life, storms of pain, sorrow, a lot of, them, a lot of unexpected ordeals we face in our lives, they come like those Santa Ana winds, unexpectedly, and there's nothing we can do about it. Sickness, marriage issues, family issues, work-related issues, some are high in resistance and some are not so high in resistance, but at the end, we have to face them and deal with them. It kind of reminds me of this verse in the Bible from Book of Ephesians 6.13. It says, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Stand your ground, right? And you have done everything to stand. So, here at LBN, we're very passionate about sharing the Word of God. We may not have control over Santa Ana once. We may not have control over what we face in life of difficulties, of all type of difficulties that you and I and all of us have gone through. But we are in control of one thing, and that is strengthening our spirits with the Word of God. But also, we are in control on how we can witness and share the Word of God around the world. Today, program hopefully will be a blessing to you to understand more about the importance of the Word of God and what you and us can do together to share the Word of God. Let me turn it over to Marlon Paley, who will help us start the program. Marlon, are you ready? Yes, we're ready. Turn it over to you, my friend. Uh, thanks. Ken Hanna, that's uh, president of the Film Melinda Broadcasting Network, and next to him, uh, Sheila Hodgkins. Good morning, Sheila. Good morning. Nice to see or you. afternoon. <laughs> or evening, yeah. uh, depending on where you are in the world. And uh, Lee, now Lee is a chaplain and uh, just a long-standing member of the uh, LLBN family. And of course, Dr. David T Taylor, uh, you're going to have a great message uh, this, this, uh, in this program. Welcome. Thank you. We'll look at the word in 2021. That's power, power in the word. Sheila, what do we have for music? Well, we have the Wong Karens and um, JV. Jaden and Michelle are going to be playing on Eagle's Wings and It Is Well, one of our favorite hymns.
Thank you, Wong Karen family, JV, Jaden, and Michelle. Got the whole family. Mm hmm. Such a talented family. Yeah, wow. it sure is. Uh, we're going to meet the rest of them a little bit later in the, the broadcast. Uh, what, a, what a great. Yeah, what a, what a great awesome. way to bring up I, Yeah, I could have had a quartet. I don't know. I have to <laughs> talk to Michelle about how she did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, tonight is going to be a very, very special presentation uh, by uh, Dr. David Taylor. Uh, you know, there's power in the word, and especially uh, we need that power in 2021, don't we, sir? Definitely. So welcome uh, back to the podium. I can hardly wait for the treasure that you will dispense. Uh, for our benefit through the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. It's truly a privilege to meet with you as a family. Here at LLBN, we are family. When I sit in meetings with the board, we are families. We pray together. We base our decisions on the word of God, the principles of this gospel, this message, this word to all the world in this generation. It just amazes me over 25 years plus in ministry and already seven ministries worldwide, different languages, Christian Connection tonight. And we want you to see tonight on the Christian Connection how important it is to connect with Christ. What it means. Our board realizes what it means to connect with Christ. And we use different avenues. On Friday, LLBN Live, a special touch with our speaker Smith and Espinoza, it means so much. And not only that, we will find that the word means so much in what our Lord would have us to do. And so tonight I want to focus on power in the word, 2021, and our source our source is the Bible, God's word. The Bible means so much. The Bible tells us what God thinks. The Bible tells us his opinions of what's important for us who live in these days and times in which we are today. And I found as I've looked from the Old Testament Genesis to Revelation, I find that there are four categories in general, four categories about the word. Now, we want to pray to understand this and see how it can work in 2021. Let's bow our heads together wherever you are. Our Father, we do thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Touch our hearts, massage them, that we will love you even more and more. Touch our minds, that we might understand you and do what you will have us to do by the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, just take us, your sons, your daughters, the young, the unyoung, Use us to see and experience the power of the word in 2021. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus, the word made flesh. Amen. Amen. Four categories, four categories that we talked about and we're going to look at carefully. The first category that I found is that the word of God has authority. Authority, vitally important. As I look at Old Testament, New Testament, I call the Old Testament the First Testament, 
The New Testament, I call it the Second Testament, but we find it has authority. Why do I say that? It says, thus saith the Lord. The Lord says, the Lord spoke unto authority, God's word, God speaking to his vessels, God speaking to his son and daughters. And as we read this love letter, and as we look at it carefully, not only do we see the authority, but we see clarity. How clear it can be. Not mixed up in interpretations, but it's clear. The word of God is clear. So authority and now clarity. Now this clarity, it means how to become a follower of Jesus Christ. It's clear, and we'll see that tonight. It tells us how to live as a follower. It's clear. Again, we will see it's replete. And then we will see how to grow as a follower. It's clear. The authority comes from God. It's clear what we must do. So live in that Bible, read that Bible, study that Bible, reflect on that Bible. And then it's necessary. It's necessary to study it from Genesis to Revelation. Study it. In Genesis, you have the beginnings of the human family. In Revelation, you have the end, when it comes, and about the human family. It's a necessity. And I thank God we can say the Bible is enough. When every other voice is hushed, quiet, the Bible is enough. And I am so glad for that. But I want you to notice the Bible is not only enough, but the Bible says that our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let us notice God didn't go to all the trouble to send his son merely to point an accusing finger telling the world how bad it was. He came to help to put the world right again. So notice now, he didn't come to send his son to point out troubles, to point the accusing finger. And as one has said, when you point one finger, you have one accusing God and three pointing back at you. To tell the world it's bad, and we know that we are bad. We are born in sin and we are misshapen in iniquity. He came to help us, to put the world right again. And, and that's John 3, verse 17. And you know what John 3, 16 is all about. And that's so important for us. Now, notice what happens when we look at this word. Now we look inside. And what we see is that anyone Anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start. It's like a fresh loaf of bread, a fresh start, a new start is created. We are created anew. The old life is gone. A new life begins. It burgeons on. Look at it. And that's important to keep in mind. Important to keep in mind that new creation through Jesus Christ. Now, in Galatians 6, verse 15, can't you see the central issue in all of this? It's not just words we're saying. It is not what you and I do, like submitting to circumcision in the Jewish culture, reject circumcision in the Gentile culture. It is what God is doing. He is creating something totally new, a free life, real freedom. We're not bound 
by the rituals. We're not bound by what persons think along that line. Because you'll find when he came, he talked about the circumcision. He was talking to the Jewish culture, that Jewish culture. Eight days, males, circumcision. Gentiles, you're uncircumcised. I have something for you too. That's why they called him the Christ. The Christ. He has come to be that deliverer. He is creating something new. It's for all of us. And I thank God for it. And I am so grateful. But notice, John, the first cousin of Jesus, he was six months older than Jesus. And when Jesus came, he said something very special. Notice in John chapter 1, verse 15. Notice what he said. John pointed him out and called. This is the one, the one I told you was coming after me, but in fact was ahead of me. He has always been ahead of me, has always had the first word. This is John the baptizer, John the Baptist, John, who when he saw Jesus, this is he. He is the one. And John was older than he. What did he mean when he said, he has always been ahead of me. He has always had the first word. It said something about the ministry of this Jesus and what he was called to do and what he is going to do and what he accomplished in life for you and for me. I was looking carefully at Isaiah and in that Isaiah, he said, Jesus who died once died many deaths. Died once, died many deaths. You see, when he hung on that cross, he was not dying for his sins. Sin was on him, but not in him. Sin is in us, but not on us. And when he died, he died to give you freedom, to give you deliverance, to make you that new man. How did Paul say it in our text in 2 Corinthians 2? 15, if any person is in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things, past, gone. Behold, all things become new. Now, I must confess, my parents did not have to teach me to curse or to do bad things. I was born in bad shape. And I think you were too. This is why Jesus said, you must be born again. There's power in that word, being born again. I say, as I look back at it, my dad, who was David M. Taylor, was the engineer. My mother, Eula May Taylor, was the production manager. And now standing and speaking before you is Dave Taylor, the bottom line. I did bad things because I was born that way. Jesus says through Paul, that little man, he says, if any person is in Christ, they are a new creation. Now, that was not just in the day of Paul. It's in 
our day. Anyone born in Christ, you are a new creation. Now notice what happens as we look at this. That word, Jesus, six months younger than John. John was his first cousin. And John said he was before I was. This is why they call Jesus in theology the great I am. I am means the past, the present, the future, all the same with him. On my tombstone, and already they have one for me, whether or not I will be laid there in New Jersey, I don't know. My, tomb, my tombstone plot number is 208, and it has my name on it. It has when I was born. Then it has the dash, but it doesn't have when I die or will die. Jesus had no beginning. He had no end. You see that in Genesis, the book of genetics. For all of us, Adam, all of us, from Adam to Abraham, we see it. From Abraham to the end of time in Revelation, we see it. Old covenant, Adam to Abraham, new covenant, Jesus to the end. And it's so beautiful. But notice what happened. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. That's why I like the NIV. I call it the new inner city version. It, it, it speaks to us. We saw the glory with our own eyes. The one of a kind glory. Not the only begotten. If I would take you back to the original language, it would be the monogonese. The only one of its kind. An 18-year-old girl becomes impregnated. Never touched by a man. One of a kind. And when they would ask Jesus, they tell me, as you do your research, uh, how old are you? How far back do you go? He says, are you talking about when I was born to Mary? Or do I go back to Genesis where we spoke and we said the words, let us create People in our image, one of a kind, I am, past, present, future, I am, always will be. One of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out through the gifts of the Holy Spirit from start to finish. That, that's a clear message. He has no beginning. He has no end. There was a black writer by the name of James Weldon Johnson, and he talks about the creation. And he said, and God sat down and, and he thought, and he thought, God, where did he get the thought from? That means there's someone above, above him. He's the very source. Jesus, Genesis. And then we come to Matthew and we see all about the beginnings and we come to John and in the beginning was the word with God, was God and the word massages our hearts and gives us life, making us new people. Let me tell you about a friend. He and I and a young, another minister by the name of Elder Ted Jones talked with this young man. He was speaking at the University of Pacific in Stockton area. And he told us where he grew up in Harlem. And in Harlem, in one block, more than 3,000 people lived in one block. 
I've seen some towns with a population of 3,000. This is one block. Three-story apartments. One bathroom between the third floor and the second floor and the first floor. Crowded conditions. About 40 cases a night of people being babies being bitten by rats. The mother would give them the bottle and milk would drain down and the mother would go to the room later and find the baby in the bloodbath where rats eaten away at the face. And this young man was preparing, preparing to do gang war there in New York. And a man came on preaching the gospel like LLBN through Christian connections, through its ministries around the world. We realized the power of the word. And he said, God, I don't understand you. God said, you don't understand me? He says, if you're born again, you will. I make all things new. He says, I just don't understand. When I see you in churches, you always have long hair, you have blue eyes, and your head is on one side like your hands have just been washed in dove. How can you appeal to hard, tough people? And the preacher, speaking, as this guy preparing for his gang war, said, well, uh, do you understand how a black seed can be planted in brown earth and grow a fruit with a green skin has red meat with black seeds. They call it a watermelon. Do you understand how, how that can happen? No. Well, if I come into your life, I can make you a new person. And that night, this young man who talked with Elder Ted Jones and me until 12 midnight or even later in the morning. And he says when he surrendered to Jesus, he became that new creation. You see, there's power in the word to change our lives, to make us new. And that's what this is all about. And when the gang came in one of those apartments that people had left because the surroundings were so bad, 91 of them hardened guys. Some had razor cuts. Some had tattoos on their necks. Some of them just looked mean. And he says, fellas, I have something to tell you. I can no longer lead the gang. They said, oh, come on, Tom, don't, don't, don't play with us. He says, I can't. He says, I can no longer lead the gang. He got up from the little table, turned his back to walk out. And Tom said, Taylor and Jones, I expected to feel a bullet going through my back. But nothing happened. I was able to get out. He left that gang. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is past. That birth of our mothers, our fathers, our roots, whether Irish, Gentile, whether you're Jewish or whatever, we can become new creations. There's power to change us. He walked out of that room. And he said about two nights later, one of the guys in the group, they call him the mop, M-O-P. He says, Tom, I want to talk with you. And Tom said, I'd better run. But his brain said, you can't outrun a bullet. Tom stood still. Being that new creature in you mean now my death will take place. Notice what the mom said to him. He says, Tom, the other night when you told us you could no longer lead the gang, I had planned 
to shoot you in the back when you walked out the room. But he says, my arms were like they had been encased in steel or cement. I couldn't move them. He says, I couldn't move them. Tom, what was it? And Tom says, and the word became flesh. Jesus Christ, it was Christ in you. And let me tell you, this hardened guy they called the mop. You know why they called him the mop? Whenever they would have their little battles there, he would always take out his razor and a knife and he would stab someone. And they would bleed. He would rub the blood around. He had seven brothers and sisters. Half of them had different dads. Half of them had different dads. They slept in a two-bedroom apartment. This guy says, I'm not going to make it. I'm bound for the big house. But that night, he prayed with a Tom, prayed with him, and the mop was changed. He was changed so much that he went to school and got it here because Jesus Christ, the word, had gotten it there. He went to Columbia University in New York. He graduated. And he is now a practicing attorney because the word was made flesh in his life. So I tell you, this young man's life was changed because of the word, the authority of the word. It means so much. The word, it's necessary. It shows us what we must do. And it takes surrender. We don't like surrender. We think of surrender as defeat. But in this surrender to the word, it's victory. The mop made it. Tom made it. You and I can make it. But it takes surrender of the word made flesh. And then, as John tells us in that 12th chapter, in the first chapter of John, verse 12, and as many as receive him, they become the children of God. LBN's ministry, children of God around the world. LLBN ministry, in our board meetings, we sit around that table, different cultures, born again by the power of God. And I thank God, it's by faith, we are now the children of God. Talk to him where you are. Accept him as your savior. Make that surrender. And in that surrender, you'll have real victory in Jesus. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the word made flesh, showing us how to live and giving us the gift that we might live by your grace, by your power. Amen. Amen. Elder David Taylor with Power in the Word and 2021. Thank you for this uh, Thank you. really, really great message. Um, uh, Lee, Hi, Marlon. how are you doing today? I'm blessed to be here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What do you think about uh, power in the word? How much power is in the word? There's much more power than you can use. <laughs> <laughs> Care to elaborate? Well, we know that, as Dr. Taylor's pointed out, um, God is all-powerful. Yeah. And I don't think we can even begin to imagine what that means. Because power has so many different definitions, and a big part of his power is empowerment, because mm. he shares it around. Mm. Yeah, so um, this almighty power and this empowerment and strength for us to follow him. And yet his power is uh, used, tempered mm. in love. You know about this uh, power, don't you? 
Yes, it's the power that gives us strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just curious, Dr. Taylor, when you first studied the Bible, what, how did you study and how is it when you first got to know Jesus, how, how did you begin reading the Bible to what is your regimen like now? I would say it started, believe it or not, in Sabbath school. There where I grew up in the neighborhood, teachers teaching me early teens. I mean, we were early and we were teens and we were something else, mm -hmm. you see. But they got us started. They whetted our appetite. Then I would just read. I became real legalistic. You know, we always wanted to have seven studies. I studied daily. That's mm -hmm. why they changed it to daily. Did you study seven times? Mm -hmm. I would, on Friday night, I would read my lesson seven times. <laughs> I studied seven times. See, being legalistic. Mm -hmm. But the daily study, how to live, how to grow, mm -hmm. how to keep moving forward. Fall in love with the word. It's sufficient. And it strengthens us. It's mm -hmm. getting that necessary food. And, and it became, to me, Sister Sheila, it really became real when they had a youth day at our church. And the guy they chose to speak, I give you his first name, Alfonso. And Alfonso stuttered, like living in a cold environment. You turn the car on, you go, uh. <laughs> that was Alfonso. Mm. I said, why did they pick him to speak? My buddy and I, we sat on the front row. We were ready to laugh. And when he finished, he didn't stutter once. I got up and made my decision. See, God can manage mm. and use people mm. becoming. And from that point on, my life moved forward. Mm. And just think, if I hadn't done that, I never would have met my wife, Maxine. That's right. No telling where I would have been. <laughs> I never would have gone to Oakwood University. I had a four-year scholarship offered to go to Morgan State to run the high and low hurdles, and I turned it down. Now, let me whisper this. My Jewish track teacher, Mr. Enton, said to me, I have four years for you, room, board. I said, what? I says, but I can't accept it, coach. He says, why not? I says, I'm going to Oakwood to be a preacher. Oakwood? Where is that? Mm -hmm. I said, Huntsville. In New Jersey, he said, Huntsville. Huntsville, <laughs> Alabama. He said, do you know what they do to your people in Alabama? I said, the Lord has called me. Mm. You see, so that's the difference. You may have plans and dreams, but let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ. And it comes alive in everyday activities, what we do, mm. how we live, how we treat people, how we relate people. Mm. And that's so important. Amen. So you excelled in track and field. High and low hurdles. Well. Wow. I used to box a little, too. <laughs> I think I'm going to stay away from you. <laughs> Get him. Well, we have something in common. I boxed in high school as well, so but we will not box each other. That's right. No, definitely not. When that surrendering, what you were talking about, mm. you, know, you surrendered yourself to God by going to Oakwood College. You, you knew that you'd been called on. The difference, it's interesting when you talk about surrender, where it means you give up, you're defeated. Mm -hmm. But through Christ, you are freed up. Mm -hmm. Completely opposite. He removes you from the imprisonment that you put yourself in. He gets you out of yourself, out of the old way, and gets you in a whole brand new way. He opened the chains from around you. He opened, he unlocked the door to the prison and give you the freedom. It's completely the opposite of the understanding of mm. when you surrender in war or you surrender to the police, you're done. You're done. You're either prisoner of war or you are someone going to serve time. So I love how Jesus mm. always, it's, it's the way, the light, the beginning, all things. Mm. Now, it's interesting. Not everybody, from my experience, Dr. Taylor, gets a, a clear call. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I want to serve God. Now, where's that coming from? Is that a clear call or is that I've read the Bible and I feel attracted that way? And so then people step out that way. They go to school, they go to college, 
They go to seminary, they become pastors. But the act of calling wasn't a clear voice. Mm -hmm. It was just, I want to do this to serve God. What do, you, what do you think of that? Because I think there's few people like that. I, I love that, and maybe we can talk about it a little later, but yeah. remember, he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we mm -hmm. want to see what the Holy Spirit can do that brings about a change mm -hmm. in the life. Mm -hmm. A lot gift. more to talk about. Lots more. Just mm -hmm. in a few minutes, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact. Thank you. Uh, because guess what? Sheila. More music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you got, Sheila? Well, we have the Wong Karen family one more time. And they will be playing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Mm. And J.V. Ja Javet and Michelle on the piano, their mom. lovely to see this <laughs> how the young people are moving to uh, yeah. fill in you know, the places that I know it's the angels are clapping it brings joy to my heart yeah. to see young kids yeah you know Jesus had a really special place in his heart for the young you know children just as he had for Dr. Taylor he ignited that spark yeah how and it's a blessing you when you made your decision I made my decision. I was in the 10th grade high school. Yeah. You see. Mm -hmm. And uh, and my friends 
Notice the difference. You know, I was a little skinny guy then. 26-inch waistline. You know, yeah. Running the hurdles. He was like 15 years and, old, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that made a difference. Mm-hmm. And some of my friends became members of the church. Mm-hmm. You see, the gift of the Holy Spirit, what he does in our lives, we have to cross the bridge. And what I mean crossing the bridge is we must cross the bridge from where it was written, Old Testament, cross the bridge to centuries. 2,000 years later, we get the New Testament. Years later, we cross that bridge to get where we are today. And that's when we come to looking at scripture, not, well, I like one Bible that Jesus used, the King James. Did Jesus use the King James? Mm. You know, the language, the methods of doing things. And we have to look at the context is so important. And I saw as I listened about Jesus and what happened in my friend's life, Tom's mm. life, I said, man, this is amazing. He's dead now, Tom, Tom died, but he was quite a fella. And I'll never forget that experience of what Jesus can do. You see, we say the church, and the church, you've heard me say it, C-H-U-R, C-H-U-R, church. They say, well, we're going to church this weekend. No, church, 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 church. Mm-hmm. Here we are yeah. today, you see. And there was one church I passed by when I pastored up in Vallejo, California. They had a big sign with an arrow pointing down. And it says, the church of so-and-so meets here. See, we meet. We are the church. Mm -hmm. And Christ is a manager of the church through the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. Yeah, but didn't Paul say that we were purchased with a price? We were not our own. And this is the temple of God, Mm -hmm. each one of us. That makes you a church, right? That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Church. And uh, get them. Well, there, there, there's a verse talk about the church mm-hmm. in Ephesians 4.1. It says, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors, and the teachers. So mm-hmm. God put all kind of talents and gifts yeah. to be in the church. Just your, you know, and LLBN is a worldwide church in every way, and pastor tailor stories and testimonies and teaching today you know it's 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 a teaching that we offered into the world into mm-hmm. people homes that otherwise they would have never been able to hear this testimony well pastor taylor is all of those that you just read yeah mm-hmm. you know, well, god gives the gifts to some to do yeah. what he's doing he gives the gifts some to do what you're doing give the gifts to others mm-hmm. to do what they're doing here uh the viewers the gifts of supporting us uh, that's, that's how the church works. We are the church. We the are the church. And you see, in Old Testament, written Hebrew, Aramaic, and later in Greek, we call it the Septuagint, the LXX. Right. You see, they are dead languages now. <laughs> Live message. They speak. <laughs> you see, yeah. you have to cross the bridge. Yeah. And crossing the bridge, many times when we see law, we say, hey, the Ten Commandments in the Pentateuch, first five books, law, Moses, ritual, circumcision, all of this, right. Jesus, Calvary, when he talked about love, it covered from Eden, Pentateuch, to Calvary, to the time's end. So vitally important to keep in mind Because when I go to Mount Sinai, I see the Ten Commandments. You see, they condemn me. I go to Mount Calvary, I see Jesus. He redeems me. Mm -hmm. I go to Mount Sinai, I see my sin. I leave there, go to Mount Calvary, I see my Savior. Mm -hmm. I go to the Ten, I say, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me? I go over to Mount Calvary. I thank God through Jesus. The Old 
Testament is in the New Testament revealed what they did in the sanctuary, pointing to Jesus. And the New Testament was in the Old Testament concealed. What are all these things in the sanctuary? The lamb, who did it represent, etc. So we can see how they go together. That's why I call it the First Testament, yeah. not Old Testament, the New Testament, mm -hmm. the Second. Because they all oh, that's from the Old Book. That's done away with. No, oh. Jesus quoted from mm -hmm. it. And the book of Revelation has over 200 and something quotations from the Old the, Testament. That's the book of Revelation. If, if, mm -hmm. if I may add just another chapter to this. I find it interesting how in the Old Testament it talks about the sanctuary, which is the temple. Mm -hmm. And yet God referred to us as, as the temples of God also. Mm -hmm. Complete transition from the, from the physical temple to our temple, which he really elevated us. He lifted us. He made us a sanctuary to dwell here in us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and such a, an amazing gift, such an amazing power, such amazing recognition by the Father to us as humans, shows we're not an inventory item to him. We are all temples of God. Temples of God, and finally, I'll keep quiet. Talking to no, you're great. Um, <laughs> love, the Greek word, eros, emotional. Oh, I love you. Hair stands up on my neck. <laughs> you see, paleo, Philadelphia, brotherly love, sisterly mm. love, you see. But when Jesus came, he sacrificed himself. Yeah. We get that new word in love. You know what that is? A God. God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be willing to die for you. That's real love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When he talks about the law, he's talking about the entole. That's the Ten Commandments. So he summarizes it. If I would say, I'll, I'm going to kill Ganem, I was going to kill someone. Mm -hmm. And if I did it, I would end up in jail. If I said, God upset me so I felt like I should kill him, would I go to jail for that? Jesus says, I give you the spirit of it. If you think evil, see, that's the difference. And what he can do, that new creation, the spirit of it, it means so much. Hmm. Just don't say in your heart that you hate your brother. No. <laughs> that's right. No. <laughs> and, and I know, David, David mm -hmm. loves me. As oh, yeah. We, we have There's God's love in our hearts. And, uh, yeah. You know, it's year 2021. Uh, <clears throat> and people look at God differently now than who God is. Just because it's year 2021, uh, life becoming the cell phones and social media comes into television. It comes into the news. It comes in so many formats. And when they talk to God, they think of God just another medium. We forget how mighty God is, how powerful, how supernatural he is. You look at the sun and you can't look, it'll blind you. He made that sun. Imagine the power he has. The moon, mm -hmm. the plants, the humans, everything and everything we know, we hear, we smell, we feel is from God and created by God. So I want to remind if whoever watching us today God, it isn't some old buddy, you just pick up the phone and have a conversation, and it ends right there. God is a mighty, mighty God. God takes your request in interest. God takes you in big interest. God can change your life. We cannot change each other's life. The news cannot change our lives. Entertainment cannot change our lives. We'll have fun for a minute or two or hour or three, but it doesn't change our life. There's no value in it. The value is in Jesus. But we do have to ask. Yes, we do have to ask. Mm. But that's, that's why we need to look toward God mm. and, and, and open our arms and surrender, not in defeat, but surrender mm. in freedom, in a whole new freedom, in a whole new life. I've seen so many people have got changed. Marlon, I take 30 seconds. I make it really quick. Five, six years ago, I was in a, in a, in a towing truck. Went to, the guy picked me up to tow my car and took me to the dealer. Tattoos everywhere, everywhere. I'm sitting in that truck and I'm thinking, I better not turn my face the other way. I'm afraid to look at him and I'm afraid to look away because I didn't know what I got into. And 10 minutes into the drive, we have a little conversation and the guy turned out to be the sweetest in Christ person, completely converted. 
Make it real short. He was converted two years before he became a truck driver. He was just like the gentleman you described. He was in gangs. But Jesus changed his life. He said, I can't get rid of this, but this right here is brand new. Yes. Well, we've uh, spent uh, the last hour talking about power in the word. You know, that represents Jesus. He's, he's the word. Um, but it's our duty to spread the word. And that's what we're here uh, doing. And we're able to do this because of your generosity. We have a building project that really needs attention. Uh, it's about $575,000 uh, is needed right now. If the Lord so moves, consider that as part of your giving. We appreciate that and your support here at the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. See you next time on Christian Connections. Mm -hmm.